Hey everybody, Mr. Murray here, back with another classic simplifying trig expression video. And we are still trying to simplify these down to a single term with at most one trig function and no fractions remaining. So let's just jump right into it here. You know, hopefully by this point you're starting to get comfortable, starting to uh, know the do's and don'ts of this. So number one, and today's video is I'm going to have two examples, and they're going to focus on uh, encountering complex fractions in your work. That means fractions within fractions. Because I see I have a big fraction here. And I'm going to erase that. I don't like that there. But I see I have a big fraction here, and nothing is squared, so there's no Pythagorean identities. Um, but our other strategy of maybe rewriting things in terms of sines and cosines, that could be employed here. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to rewrite cosecant as 1 over sine. So I'm trying to be neat here because cosecant of theta is 1 over sine of theta minus sine of theta, and that's all in the numerator. And in the denominator, cosecant is 1 over sine of theta. OK, so. A lot of ways to go here when you have complex fractions. Maybe you remember from earlier in the year, you know, before we even started trig, complex fractions, you can either say, I'm going to make a common denominator with these two and put them together and make one fraction, uh, or I could multiply through by the LCD to cancel all fractions in one step. So suppose you are an LCD person. And that means you look at the denominators of all the small fractions in the overall fraction and they both have sine of theta so the LCD would be sine of theta so I'm going to multiply by sine of theta to cancel those denominators but if I multiply the top I gotta to multiply the bottom by it and then remember why this is uh, useful because when you take this and you distribute it to each the num you know each term in the numerator there it should cause those denominators to cancel sine times 1 over sine that's going to give you 1 minus sine times sine, just don't forget to distribute to the other term, that would be sine squared. In the denominator, sine times 1 over sine, hey, well, that's just going to be 1. Ah, and 1 minus sine squared is what we're left with here. And 1 minus sine squared, hopefully, uh, you know, now you're getting pretty good with these things, pretty comfortable. That's a Pythagorean identity, right? 1 minus sine squared, the identity is sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. So 1 minus sine squared is equivalent to cosine squared. And I'm just writing this off to the side here to show you where it comes from. That wouldn't need to be shown to me in, in doing your work. It's pretty acceptable to go right from 1 minus cosine squared gives you cosine squared. Boom. Single term, no fractions, single trig function. Love it. Uh, so suppose, however, that you are not a person who loves multiplying through by the LCD, although I still encourage you to be comfortable with it because it can work out so nicely. It is a little bit faster and smoother than uh, the other method. But suppose you're, you're just not comfortable with it. We'll do it the other way, which means let's add these two together, or subtract in this case, by making common denominators. So that means this is sine over 1. I'm going to convert just this little fraction to having a denominator of sine. Okay, so in the numerator, so I'll just keep this work here so we can kind of see it parallel. I still have 1 minus sine, 1 over sine, sorry, 1 over sine minus, and when I convert that second fraction, that's going to give you sine squared over sine of theta. Then you can put those together. 1 minus sine squared over sine of theta, all divided by 1 over sine of theta. And now here's your goal. You've made one fraction uh, divided by another fraction. This is where you are going to do the top fraction, you know, the numerator. 
multiply by the reciprocal of that denominator. So multiply by the reciprocal of 1 over sine would be sine over 1. And that's going to allow your sines to cancel, and you're right back to where we were a minute ago. I'm left with 1 minus sine squared, which is equal to cosine squared. So not too painful to do it that way either. Really about the same amount of work, maybe a, a step or two longer, but nothing crazy there. Some people just feel a little more slow and steady by doing that. No worries. Okay, and finally, finally, I am gonna show you way number three because this also jumped out at me and maybe it was jumping out to you, which is, I'm gonna just take these away here to give myself a little space. Suppose you were looking at this original fraction and saying, hey, 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 cosecant, there's another cosecant there. What if I divide them? That would give me one. And that would be okay as long as you divide everything in the numerator by cosecant. Or in other words, you kind of break it up to so cosecant of theta over cosecant of theta minus sine over cosecant. And that's fine because cosecant divided by cosecant is one. Now on the right, that's sine divided by cosecant, and hey, you can bring that up and make it its uh, reciprocal, which is just you know multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator, which is another sine, and you get one minus sine squared, which hey, should look very familiar. We keep getting one minus sine squared, and then that allows us to change that into cosine squared. So really all using the same math, but kind of three variations on how to get there. Good stuff, right? You know, you don't always have to do the problem the same way I do. In fact, you might have a better way sometimes on a homework problem than the way I, I show. And you know, that happens. I don't always know the fastest way. So let's take a look at this one here. Just another one where we've got things going on in a fraction and Unlike the previous one, I don't have a monomial in the denominator, so it's not going to work so nicely to just do, you know, secant divided by cosine, da da da, because your whole denominator is a binomial. So that, that third way I showed you with the first problem won't really be able to work well here. But I probably would rewrite that secant as 1 over cosine of theta. And then you've got this. And see, to me, I've got another complex fraction, a fraction within a larger fraction. I'd like to multiply through by the LCD. Uh, if you'd like to make a common denominator with these two, put these two together, that's fine. But I'm going to multiply everything through by the LCD, which is cosine. To, so to cancel that, just remember you've got to multiply the denominator of the overall fraction by that same thing because that way I'm really just multiplying by cosine over cosine, which is one, so you're not changing the value, which is why you show that in your work too. Notice I didn't just write cosine once, and be lazy, I wrote it twice. And now we distribute that. Cosine times one over cosine is one minus cosine. And you distribute that, right? You get one minus cosine. And in the denominator, I have cosine times one minus cosine, and you know what? If you just kind of hang on to it and keep it in factored form, because just saying it out loud it sounded uh, like I was repeating one minus cosine. That whole factor cancels with the numerator. Just be careful what are you left with? One over that cosine of theta, and just going to flip that using its reciprocal. Reciprocal cosine is secant. And there we go. One trig function, no fractions, one term. Love it. You would get the same thing you know, by doing common denominators here and multiplying by the reciprocal, all that. So feel free to try it a different way. See if you get the same answer. And as always, if you're not sure, if you've got any questions, just ask. So be persistent. Hang in there and keep working hard on this.